Hey guys, so even though in general, the NFT market is down a good deal from its recent peak, many people clearly remain optimistic over the long-term value of NFTs. Even Harambe is coming back from the grave to get a piece of the action. And if you follow this channel, you know that I strongly believe that we're at the beginning of an entirely new mega trend that could turn almost everything related to culture into tokens that you're able to invest in and trade. And I think this will give rise to a new investor that'll be, you know, part Wall Street and part internet connoisseur. And while selling photos of Harambe is probably not how I'd use my own money, there are clearly a lot of interesting projects in the works right now that are redefining what it means to own something on the internet. But today I wanna to talk about something a bit more serious that should be top of mind for anyone considering buying an NFT. So I put together nine of what I consider to be the biggest risks that could crush the value of an NFT, and I'll go through them one by one. And I recommend you don't skip any of these. I specifically chose them because they represent realistic worst case scenarios. And the last thing you wanna do is be blindsided by something that you didn't see coming. By the end of this video, you should have a much better understanding of what could go wrong. And that'll help you make better buying decisions because as you'll see, some projects have more exposure to these risks than others. And of course, if you plan on going deep into this space, definitely don't forget to subscribe. This channel is all about spotlighting the latest NFT projects and trends. So come join in the community if that sounds interesting to you and hit the like button so that YouTube finally responds to my late night texts. All right, plug is over, let's get started. So I wanna start by quickly giving you a framework that should help you understand some of these risks, right? So I see a ladder of risks that start with, you know, the individual NFT and everything that could go wrong there, but it scales all the way up to sort of the macro, you know, economic level. And everything that happens at these top levels also have downstream effects that flow all the way down through the layers. So at the very top, we have the first major risk NFT investors face, which is an economic downturn. Now, it's no secret that we're living in a world that's currently awash with liquidity, right? To put it simply, many people have more money than they know what to do with it, and all types of investments have basically only gone up in the last decade. The youngest generation hasn't faced a real long-term economic crash before, and the only thing we know for sure is that another crash will happen, we don't know when, but it's just a natural part of the business cycle. Now you might think, hey, Giancarlo, doesn't every type of investment have this risk? And the answer to that is that some investments get it worse than others when things go south. The first thing to go during a crash, you know, the first thing that we throw overboard is anything related to discretionary spending. So if you think of stocks, you know, you have companies that deal with the type of spending that only happens during bull runs, like the Pelotons and the Hasbros of the world. These typically get crushed during a downturn. And as much as I love NFTs, we have to admit that these are not essential goods. They're kind of as discretionary as it gets. So while other parts of the crypto world might actually do better during a downturn, you know, things like Bitcoin or DeFi, NFTs might actually have a pretty rough time. You see, the current state of NFTs is interesting because demand has grown a ton over the last six months, but in general, there are only a handful of viable quality NFT projects. And these projects are clearly benefiting from being the first movers. You know, most of them started being developed uh, a year ago or earlier. And as a result, these new users are gravitating towards these projects because they're more polished, they're already further down the line. And it's almost like being the first big YouTubers when YouTube first launched, right? It's like, of course they were big at the time. There was nowhere near the competition that we have now. There wasn't much else to watch. And for example, if you visualize the top Twitch streamers over time, you get a great view of just how quickly and dramatically consumer demand can change. Now, it's not a huge deal in the case of Twitch streamers because no one had a lot of money tied up with these creators, right? Your relationship was just that of a fan. But that's gonna change now with NFTs because people are actually gonna be investing a lot of hard-earned money, not just with collectibles and games, but with creators themselves. And this could end up bad for some people because if NFT projects follow hype cycles that are similar to traditional games and media, then we should expect the casual user base to move from project to project as something new catches their eye. Just be aware that there's a huge wave of supply coming in the next couple of years. And if you're an investor and you're clever and you know predicting user behavior, then you'll succeed in continuously riding new wave after new wave and leaving at the right time. Or maybe you can pick out the diamonds that do have long-term potential and will survive through different waves, but that's easier said than done. And not everyone is gonna be able to do that, which makes this a great risk for especially buy and hold investors that don't really have time to pay attention to the changes in culture. 
So some collections and games are exposed to the risk of whales picking up crucial NFTs that could manipulate how the game or community works. We saw this a ton in traditional video games, games where you could buy items that helped you win in multiplayer mode, you know, games like FIFA, and eventually they always lead to a group of overpowered players, making it extremely difficult for new players to come in. In the case of FIFA, you know, they were lucky that the game basically resets every year with the new version, so the whales essentially lose everything when they cross over to the new edition. But with NFTs, there aren't any resets. And think about this, players were spending thousands of dollars in video games when the only benefit they got in return was being able to win in multiplayer. Now with NFT games, you have the added rocket fuel of being able to make money off of your NFTs, which should put this whole behavior on steroids. And this is dangerous for a few reasons. First, it ties the price of an asset to the whims of a handful of people. Take CryptoPunks for example, where the top five wallets own 15% of all the punks and could severely oversupply the market if they decide to, which would tank the price. Second, one of the dreams that all NFT projects have is allowing users to have some degree of governance, meaning that people who own specific NFTs have the right to vote on things within the community or platform. Having too much concentration and voting power with just a small group of people sounds like the opposite of what they're trying to achieve. And third, whales have the ability to corner a market within a game. So in Decentraland, this might mean buying up all of the most important real estate and then charging, you know, astronomical rent to anyone that wants to use it. Or in Zedrun, it could mean buying up the most valuable horses and then raising prices to breed with them. In other words, whales can lead to monopolies and ruin the overall value of an asset. So until now, the SEC and other regulatory bodies have been pretty hands off when it comes to NFTs and social tokens. That doesn't mean they're okay with everything that's happening, they just haven't given an official opinion yet. The most likely scenario is that they're preparing and gathering info to make sure that they can balance, you know, between con protecting consumers on one hand and making sure that they don't stifle innovation in the other. But trust me, it's on their minds. And in fact, the SEC chairman recently came out and said, to the extent that something is a security, the SEC has a lot of authority. And a lot of crypto tokens, I won't call them cryptocurrencies for this moment, are indeed securities. When that happens, we might find that some NFT projects are breaking the rules and need to be classified as securities. And the regulatory hoops that token holders will need to jump through might be too much to keep these projects going. Some projects are higher risk than others. It's definitely you know a spectrum, right? On one side, anything that has full decentralization and which allows people to get tokens through their own efforts, maybe like a full play to earn game, these should be okay. On the other side, anything that is more centralized and gives token holders dividends could be at risk. There's a lot to explore here, and all we can hope is that you know the SEC doesn't come swinging the ban hammer without giving the industry a chance to grow. So if you didn't already know by now, these past couple of months gave us firsthand confirmation that NFT value is still pretty much tied to the value of Ethereum. Now, most people coming to NFTs are hoping to one day be able to cash out back into their you know, preferred fiat currency, whether that's in one year or 10 years. And they may not be used to having to consider the macro effects of their currency they're using when they're making an investment. You know, you don't normally think about the long-term value of the dollar when you're buying a house or car. But with NFTs, you have to consider the future value of ETH. Now, I understand that ETH has been resilient at a massive scale for years now, but look, nothing is perfect and it could always fall prey to a hack or a competitor. Just today, Ethereum developers scrambled to close a loophole from an upcoming feature that would have left the network vulnerable to fake transactions. And we have more updates coming in the future that could introduce more bugs and loopholes. And that's assuming an NFT project uses ETH, but it could actually be using a smaller, less battle-tested blockchain like Flow in the case of NBA Top Shot. The good news is that we're moving towards a world where it'll be easier to transfer NFTs across blockchains. And I like this description by the venture capitalist Chris Dixon from a recent interview where he says, imagine a world where you're playing a game, it has virtual goods, and those virtual goods are interacting with Flow. But then some of your virtual goods get really valuable. You say, you know what? I wanna put these in the bank. So you move them over to Ethereum using a trustless bridge, which is a way for NFTs and cryptocurrencies to move across blockchains. Now, something along those lines could reduce the overall chain risk because you're not completely dependent on any specific blockchain. But in the meantime, until we get there, I think we're still pretty exposed. All right, look, let's be honest. We all get a little emotionally attached to our NFTs. And the last thing you want is, you know, to buy a crypto junk for your family. And then when you go to deliver it on Christmas morning, you find out that it leads to a broken URL. 
This can happen if the image connected to your NFT wasn't stored properly. And what's left is that, you know, you have a token that leads to nothing. So how does this happen? Well, basically what you get when you buy an NFT is a key that tells the world that you own a specific thing. But often that thing is represented by a URL that lives in the metadata on chain. That URL points to a file that lives off chain. And if it's being hosted on a centralized website that gets taken down, you lose the evidence that you own that art forever. You want to make sure that the actual file is being hosted on something like IPFS, which is sort of like a decentralized BitTorrent network that's designed to hopefully last forever. And here's how you can find out how your NFT is being stored. All right, so we can do this in I think less than a minute. So you're basically gonna find an NFT. I have the board Apes here, click on one, and then you're gonna go down to where it says details and it has the token ID, which you're gonna copy, and then you're gonna to go to this contract address, right? And then you're gonna click on contract, read contract, and then what you're looking for is this token URI, and then you can just enter the token ID, hit query, you get a link here, copy that, and this link is gonna give you all of the metadata of that token, right? So you have like the fur color, the eye color, then here you have the image link. And as you can see, the link is an IPFS link. And you can put that in the URL and it'll take you directly to the image that hopefully, you know, with IPFS, it should be persistent on the internet, you know, for the rest of time, basically. That, that's how they designed it. When you think about it, many of us just assume that the average consumer on the street cares about decentralization. Maybe they don't. Maybe they mostly just care about good user experiences. For example, recently I've had the experience of asking friends to try out crypto games and then when they find out that they can lose complete access to their NFTs or have their wallets hacked into, it scares the hell out of them. This is a serious point of friction for new users. And recently in Zed Run, someone was hacked simply by clicking a link in Discord which gave the hacker backdoor access to their phone which they then used to steal horse NFTs worth over $100,000. For us, it's just one of the drawbacks of having a fully decentralized platform, which we believe has a ton of other benefits, right? But not everyone will agree. And if Facebook or Google come in with their own centralized version of NFTs that appear to be safer and easier to use, some will see Mark Zuckerberg as a white knight coming in to save the day. And believe me, all of the major social media platforms are looking into this and figuring out how they can copy what's working. And Facebook is a master copier, right? They've done it with Snapchat and Stories, they've done it with TikTok and Reels, and they could also do it with NFTs. In the case of NFT investing, you're not just betting on an individual token, you're also betting that the platform that gives those NFTs value will continue to exist in the future. For example, with Zed Run, it's not just about the horse. You need to ask yourself how likely it is that the Zed Run platform will be around in the long term. It's the same thing with real estate in Decentraland and with soccer cards in So Rare. You always are betting on the platform. I often compare investing in NFTs to angel investing, right? Which is when Rich people give checks to startups when it's just an idea or a prototype. Angel investors know that 95% of these startups go to zero, but they play the game because all you need is one unicorn to make serious bank. In other words, they diversify a ton of small bets. Now, I'm actually not against making concentrated bets into one or just a couple NFT projects if you have super high conviction, right? It's a super high risk, high reward strategy, which isn't for some people, but it does work for others. Just please try to zoom out for a bit to realize that even though a project looks healthy right now, there's a long history of projects succumbing to the hype cycle or facing adversity from the thousands of fires that startups have to put out every single day. Just make sure you have an understanding of how well financed the team behind the platform is, what their long-term vision is, and what their plans are for a business model over the long run. So creator risk is huge and it's somewhat similar to platform longevity, but it has more to do with the behavior of the creator or platform, more so than their ability to you know, stick around. And one perfect example is a creator who doesn't understand the concept of oversupply. So you might find a celebrity that you like and you buy their tokens, only to find out that they pump out more and more NFTs as time goes on with no regard to their early buyers. You also have the risk of a creator not fulfilling their promises. So. With Gary V's VFriend collection, he's promoting access to three annual conferences and a lot of the value is tied to this promise, but that's all it is, a promise. Again, smart contracts are not legal contracts and you don't actually have 
any claim against Gary if he doesn't deliver. And in fact, the terms on his site state that they can modify part or all of the services without notice. On the platform side, there's also the risk that the team behind the project messes up the code in a way that introduces hacks or adds features that ruins the economy in case of a game. There's a long history of developers accidentally creating glitches in even big blockbuster AAA games. And in the case of NFT games, we're usually dealing with less experienced developers, while at the same time the stakes are higher than ever because of how much money people are investing into the game economies. So there you have it guys, these are all valid concerns, but no investment is without risk. I still think the upside of NFTs over the long run more than makes up for these risks, especially if you focus on projects that have strong teams and a great community that can weather a storm. So thanks again for watching. If you learned something from this video, don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you again soon.